sounds about that sounds about like the internet. Uh, This is the horrible show from horriblenight.com for Tuesday, March twenty fifth, twenty fourteen. Coming to you live on Twitch TV slash horrible night. I'm your host Justin Lacey, joined tonight by (laughs) Jason Thompson. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I think I'm gonna go ahead and speak for everybody and say they're doing all right, (laughs) except for Jordan Wilson. How's Jordan Wilson? I'm I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. You're very welcome. I didn't know this was NPR. <laughs> <laughs> this talk, let's talk about what's going on in the world. This is overseas. the overseas. This is the only sh- NPR joke sh- that I know. On. Welcome. This is this how we should. Never mind. It sounds like an SNL skit now. Hey, hey, Jason. I haven't talked to you in forever because you've been on the road. What have you been doing? Yeah. Well, uh, Andy and I went to South by Southwest. I guess what two weeks ago. It was like the week after I was last on. Whatever that was. And we decided to drive this year, so that's about, oh, I don't know, 1,200-mile trip. Was that a good decision or a bad decision? For us, it was a good decision, but, you know, Arkansas is just the bane of everyone's existence. It lived up to all the worst expectations I had for it. <laughs> uh, they apparently don't know how to use a snowplow because they only have one snowplow. <laughs> well, they've only got like two or three streets, I, though, right? I was going to say, I, I think, think I've heard that before on like some comedian stand-up routine they but it might actually be true it's very true it's very true in the last six months i've gotten stuck there twice this time we actually got stuck in traffic for two hours that was fun I, on the interstate i hate getting stuck in traffic i will do anything i will drive like two times as far as i need to if it means i can yeah. be in a constant constant flow you'll drive, versus stop you'll drive, drive six and, hours out of the way rather than yes. just sit in the traffic yes yeah, sounds oh, like a better I, use of my time I feel the exact same way. And that's actually what we ended up doing. We figured out that there were some county roads just off of where we were. And so we just kind of went off the beaten path. And, of course, they had actually just snowed there. And since they don't know how to use snowplows on the interstate, they certainly don't know how to use those on the country roads. Plus, we were driving a Prius, so we were about that far off the ground and thus snowplowing the country roads for all the uh, people that lived out there. So (laughs) the whole time we're driving, it's just going... And Andy's in the back. He's white knuckling the, the the way oh, there. Man. Oh the man! Oh man! I I was fine. Uh, the 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 driver uh, is an experienced driver from Michigan, so oh, I felt yeah. pretty comfortable. But uh, it was definitely uh, definitely just avoid Arkansas at all. I was going to say because then like I don't know if you get stuck in that snow and you get out of the car and then you're like, oh, uh, now I'm in Arkansas, like for real. Yeah. Like I'm no well, longer. We, being in your well, car we, uh, in Arkansas is one thing. Right. Well, we got out, and he, uh, John, the the guy we went with, he was like, it was his car, and he was like, I think we're dragging something. And I was like, oh, that's what you want to hear in Arkansas. So we actually, <laughs> look under, under the, <laughs> we actually look under the car, and the, uh, the, the panel that protected the undercarriage had actually come off because we were hitting the snow so, so hard. So, uh, so he just, like, asked me for my knife, and he just popped that thing off, and... You got a knife. We got that's committed, exactly he, he committed Stepaku right there. Pretty much. <laughs> the, I can't handle any more of our Arkansas. I'm I'm out. Give me your knife. I'm done. So he popped that bad boy off and we got back on the road and made some You just left it in the in the road? No, we were at a McDonald's, so he actually uh, <laughs> Maybe that's what maybe that's what you caught. Somebody else's car so, trash they left in the middle of the road. No, so it, it tore was, it off. Was well, that, it was like what, it was way to pay hanging, it forward. so it was certainly it was certainly attached to the car still. It just had somehow popped off or whatever. So he just didn't feel like messing with it. So he just cut was it. Was it on the way there or back? On the way there, because on the way back we came through uh, Oklahoma oh, we, and uh, picked it back up on the way in, in Missouri. <laughs> so yeah, I've been much worse on the way on the way back. So that's uh, that's that's at least yeah, a good thing. It was, you know, it, it was a good trip. South by uh, kind of explained the, you know, the first week versus the second week mentality. We went for the first week, and it was way less busy, mm-hmm. which is certainly the uh, the better what, week to go. So, what, what part of it? Because I've I've gone to the uh, UX interactive design. Week. Well, yeah. So it's uh, first week is interactive and film, and then the second week is film and music. So we went for film, but the interactive people were there, but they were all confined to the convention center. Whereas film is and music are spread out throughout the city, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember uh, we had one girl that went with us that was uh, that does a lot of uh, film stuff in Indianapolis, and uh, they had to take a taxi. Like it was like a half hour, forty five minute drive every time they wanted to go to the film thing think, and then come back. From you the think the city of Austin's sick of South by Southwest yet? No. Like, okay. No way. <laughs> well. 
the people oh, that gee, live, the, the people that live there probably are because in, in the span of one year I mean. there's been a ton of commercial development and I'm sure they are very fond of that. Yeah. But curious. you know they, they 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 stay they stay grounded it seems like but um, yeah you can pretty much walk to most of the major film releases but there are a few uh, outside locations that you have to get a taxi for. We actually got one for one of the evening screenings. But so, you know, did that round trip about 2,400 miles, 2,500 miles, we'll say. And then immediately the next day learned that my great grandfather had passed away. So then I had to get down to South Carolina for his funeral, which was another 1,200 mile round trip. So about 3,500 miles in the span of, oh, I don't know, three or four days. I kind of want to make you play like weeks on end of Gran Turismo now. Well, something like that. Yeah. yeah. It, so I've just been playing catch up, you know. I've just been trying to to, to catch up with a, a couple games and videos. Luckily, I had recorded like two weeks worth of videos before I left and had them ready to go on YouTube. So that weekend that I was having to go out of town for family was covered. You know, I just I, I what's don't it like what, to plan ahead? It's weird. <laughs> it's weird, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but. Uh, you know, it, it allows for, for cases like that to, to take time off and, and do some stuff that you need to do. So I've just been playing catch up with games and uh, videos and all sorts of other things. Cool. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's it being, in a, being in a car for, you know, days on end, it's, it's not too bad. I, I kind of grew up you... traveling, driving, so, you know, it wasn't a big deal. I'm glad you're out of the car for for at least these couple hours. So we can. Hey, were you out. guys were you guys down there when that uh, drunk guy drove through a bunch of no, people? No, we had actually we, that was the night before we got back the night before. So yeah, that guy sucks pretty bad. That is, yeah, that was pretty awful. Yeah, I remember being out there walking around. Those streets are are packed with people the entire time. Oh yeah, especially during the music festival. I mean, there's there's yeah. a reason why they had the the street closed down, and then he of course went wrong way and also mm-hmm. drove through the barricade yeah. like a dumbass. Yeah. Um, yeah, no good. Jordan, what have you been up to? Oh, uh, I've been learning to make uh, HTML5 games using Impact JS. JavaScript, or that stands for JavaScript. Impact stands for Impact. Uh huh. Okay, gotcha. Oh, <laughs> not an acronym or anything else. Yep. Is that a like? Is that something you haven't okay. done before? You've been doing it in Flash before this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've. Uh, spent um, way longer than I should have learning how to do it in Flash, <laughs> knowing that Flash has been on its way out for like four years. Mm-hmm. But it was uh, it, kind of a nice moment. I went out to lunch with some of my family the other night, and uh, one of the advantages of making a game in HTML5 is it'll work on your iPhone. So I pulled it out in sh- my phone and showed my mom what I was working on. And uh, like even though I'm, I have a full-time job as a web developer. She still is. Oh, Jordan, you would make such a good teacher. You should. You know, what are you gonna? What are you gonna do with like with your life? Like, mom, I, like. So I, she was. I, she was ashamed. I have a job. It's just. It's just one of those I'll jobs. Make money that, on the computer. Yeah, that you know people have problem, kind of registering in mm-hmm. their minds. But when I showed her that, like her eyes lit up. She, and then of course she's like, Oh, you're gonna make millions of dollars. <laughs> Oh, uh, you are thing. Jordan. You're gonna. I Not I believe in you. Game. It's still pretty cool. Like uh, when you're messing around with that stuff, just to be able to pull up something you've made on your phone that quick. Like I yeah. still never get over that novelty. Like granted, I don't do any development, but I work with enough of you guys and talk about it enough of the time that I feel like, oh, I I see one of my ideas. Like <laughs> like yeah. some some bullshit thing I told you that you thought was kind of <laughs> cool is now I can I can I can hit buttons and it'll it'll do that and. Uh, yeah, the the only problem is uh, the nice thing about Flash was you build a game for Flash and then it runs in Flash. The thing with HTML5 is since I'm building a game in JavaScript, mm-hmm. JavaScript for what? Is it a JavaScript for my Windows PC in my Chrome browser, uh, yeah. or is it Internet Explorer 10 or 9? Web or development 8? problems. Oh, uh, my Windows PC because I I so I, I built the game part of it and now I'm like okay I need to build a title screen which means I need like a start button and an about button and then I need like a page Man, of text and you need to be able to scroll just the quit. text. So That's I got all scary. that working on my PC and then I loaded it up on my iPhone and of course none of it worked or rendered correctly. And then See. when I got all that working, my brother's got a Windows phone. I sent the link Those to okay. him. And, Those okay. and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so neat. well, no, at some point you have to say that. Like I do that as a web de- developer. I go, no, that Firefox doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> Just remake Flappy Bird. You'll be fine. Yeah, it's just, you can make fifty thousand dollars a day or something. Right. Yeah. And then, and then quit. 
I mean, you know, what you should do is get your Flappy Bird clone done in time for April Fool's Day and then release it on April Fool's Day and try to convince people that it's the real Flappy Bird. Uh, millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I don't make video games. Um, step one, Flappy Bird. Step two, question mark. Step three, dollar signs. Yep. Like <laughs> Pretty much the internet right now. Yep. Um, so I signed up for one of those uh, get a box in the mail a couple like once a month things. My my brother keeps keeps texting me about that. And I I've yet to be impressed by anything that I've seen with him. It all just looks like like just garbage. Like it's a t shirt that won't fit, crap that'll sit on well, your that's desk. That's your own fault. Work. You can choose the t shirt size. But uh, so well the reason I started doing this because I, I got bark box for my dog because we're taking his balls away this month. So I wanted to get him more stuff. His toys? Can you taking, clarify? Yes. Yeah, you're it, taking his toys. toys away? Well, that's mean. Was you he a bad dog? He's bad. He's, no, he's a good he's boy. A he's boy. a good boy. Who's a good boy? He just doesn't get to keep his balls. His his ball balls. His testicles are leaving his body. <laughs> testicles? Can you say that on Twitch? <laughs> Can you say that on the internet? No. Um. So he got, he got bark box, so I signed up for Loot Crate. To uh, uh, because, since I was just doing that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you am I gonna let your dog get one up you? No, I was like, well, if we're, if we're doing this whole mail thing, I kind of want something in the mail. Um, and uh, the wait, fir- do you have to get your balls taken off too? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, that's that was that was good. Um, so loot box is basically the uh, the kind of the the geek box of the month and uh i haven't quite I've, I've gotten two of them the first one was for like they all have themes and like when i was like browsing around you know they show off like their star wars or their marvel or their their star trek stuff and i was like oh you know like you know some random video game stuff too i was like I, I'd, I'd like some loot crate and but their themes the last two months have done nothing for me so i don't really know if i should how to judge it because it's just like oh i mean this is cool stuff but i'm just not into this new comic called The Warriors that I don't really understand. And then this month's was Titan themed. So it had like Titanfall stuff and attack attack on Titan stuff. And Shingeki no Kyojin? Yes, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But they played up the Titan <laughs> side of it. The, which I was the, like the title that, the title that everyone's familiar with. Right. Shin, Shingeki no Kyojin. Right. <laughs> well he said Bless you. Pantsuit. Um, Pantsuit. And uh so I I like I I'm waiting like how long do I'm trying to figure out how long I stick with loot crate so that they give me something that I want even though like if you think about it take casting like a, a wide swath of Titanfall fans and Attack on Titan fans they that that crate probably did pretty well for them but I was just like um you know there's the, there's a cool looking lanyard in here um and a <laughs> Titanfall t-shirt that I could probably give away on the site um and then um yeah, so I, I I guess I underestimated how specific that stuff would be each month. So uh, if there were like if there was like a Lego figurine of a Titan, like yeah, that yeah, like give me I'd, I'd, I'd be throw s- hundreds of dollars at that thing, but it, like it's gotta ha- it's gotta have it's gotta have two like directions to it. Like don't rely on me to be a fan of just the the, the sole source material, but if like yeah, if it's le- a Lego character that is also Titanfall or Attack on Titan, I can get I can get into that from the Lego side. I'm surprised. I'm surprised they needed to combine those two things together into one. I, it seems like they, no, I'm thinking there's there should be a, like enough fandom and enough merchandise for both of those that they could have split them off into like three or four. Uh, that's true, uh, but I, I think I think the guy that came up with the month's theme thought he was pretty creative because it was just like <laughs> month of the time. He, he yeah, he just really wanted to stick with that theme. Yeah, yeah so he just yeah. combined everything together. You're kind of so missed, kind of, missed kind of market though, aren't you? By doing that. Was that? Yeah. You're yeah. kind of cutting your market in, in, in a pretty good chunk, so. Yeah. Well, maybe they have the, the whole year planned out or something like that. I'm sure I'm sure they I'm sure they also plan ahead unlike me. They're more like Jason. So No, that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> no, not at all. They don't do that, no. Um let's talk some video games and Jordan, you're making games, so pitch a game to me. I'm making games, so I'm always thinking about thinking about how things could be games. So all right. You guys talked about this before, the idea of a Dracula, Dracula's castle, like, <laughs> temp agency, man, like, what? what's all, Who? all the creatures, all the creatures that you fight in the castle, what do they do in between the centuries before Dracula's raised? Well, they've actually, 
in the new games in the uh, Lords of Shadow, like the one, the Mirror of Fate, and then mm-hmm. the, the sequel, they actually address some of that stuff. Like they uh, Will we write. Uh, no. Is there, t- no, is there a temp even, agency involved? Well, I don't, I don't remember anything from that. That podcast was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but it, it, there's a castle uh, denizens. There are people that live in the castle. Mm-hmm. And so it was the idea that, um, like, I, it's not really a big spoiler, but uh, in the Lords of Shadow 2, Dracula is bored. He, uh, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, the game literally starts with him just sitting there and you get the idea he's been sitting there for centuries on that on that throne just Gross. waiting Gross. waiting to die except he can't die because he's immortal. Well, do immortals have waste problems cuz I mean when he have to get up. <laughs> what kind of throne are we talking about? Is he like constipated or <laughs> That's that's the throne and there you go. Yeah, problem problem solved. That pro- that one problem. We got oh, plenty of Game of Thrones. Got it. But, but then all the uh, they kind of they they address the fact that the castle itself is kind of a living living entity, and all the creatures in it are kind of are there because they're all like I guess sucking off of Dracula's immense <laughs> power. Oh, like so if Dracula was dead, then they would all die because they need this massive amount of I don't know evil energy or whatever okay. to sustain themselves. So the idea is there's this thriving like ecosystem going on, and and Dracula's not really a part of it. He's 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 the reason it exists. So I so I've been I, I was trying to put together like um, it's a, kind of a dungeon keeper thing where like a Sims or a resource management like mm-hmm. a towns or uh, like timber and stone or whatever. Um, so like think about the Castlevania games. There are ca- you're, there are camels. you're getting at Sim Castlevania, right? They're, they're, yeah, but so get into the um, specifics. There are candles everywhere, and they're always lit for some reason. But like, there's never a. Them. Huh? But they have, like, hearts and stuff in them. Right. So, so it's the idea of there being um, this little demon whose only job is to keep the candles lit. <laughs> and so, but you also need another demon whose job it is to actually be making the candles. Careful. I figure, careful. You like, can make, iOS developers can get a hold of this, and they're it's going to turn into this free to play micro. Transaction nightmare. Now, now it takes. It usually takes a day to make a candle, but um, <laughs> for two ninety nine, uh, you can speed that process up. Or for five gems, which cost ten dollars. Best deal of the What about flameless candles? <laughs> you, you mean an unlit candle? How about electricity? Let's get that involved. Let's no, the, um, so to make the candles, uh, so the the other demon that makes the candles has to go around the castle looking for dead uh, or fallen people. And then he makes the candles out of the fat and uh, hair of the people. And then the other demon goes around, plants the candles, and keeps them lit. Because for some reason, you got to keep the castle lit. And then, uh, it's so true. it's always ready to go. So there's a uh, okay. The wall, the mystery of the wall chicken. I think I actually figured this one out. Why there's uh, just like cooked chicken stuck in the uh, in the walls of the castle. <laughs> so from one of the D- one of the DS games, um, Castlevania, the Order of Ecclesia. Mm-hmm. There's a uh, there's a, a boss. He's this uh, like bizarre looking fat guy, but he uh, he's called the Wall Man because he can walk through walls. Seriously. So I'm thinking what's going on is because he's this just overweight, gross looking dude. He's probably just always got a bucket of KFC on him, and as he's moving through the walls, just you know he accidentally drops a piece of chicken here or there. Product so, placement. So be, I think that's well, the hell's pay the I bills think, if he gets sponsors <laughs> involved. Sounds like the juggernaut. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. but there you go. That's just. I just like your order of ecclesia reference because that's like about the most random Castlevania yeah. uh, mm-hmm. pull, pull you can make right now. But you had to you had to dig that deep to find the explanation for how the how the turkey and the walls got there. Well, it it just it it just came to me when I was that's... thinking about like the li- the little imp going around, like the imp making candles out of dead well, yeah, people, we, we light talk, candles. We talked about like the whole. You know the temp agency thing of hiring all the monsters and getting them in place. I never thought about like the mm-hmm. upkeep side yeah, of. But they actually address that in the Castlevania game in the in these newer ones, like the uh, little mm-hmm. Fleeman, the, the little humpback things. Yeah. Like in the Mirror of uh, Mirror of Fate, there's a comment or something about how they're always building, how they're constantly. They're like the around. little Citadel guys in Mass Effect. They're like the little. Yeah. 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 So. Actually, yeah. If you mention it, they they did kind of flush out the humpbacks a little bit better. They still suck as an enemy, so 
Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I like our tip agency game better than your sim game, but that's just a personal preference. Uh, Jason, you, you play more of these kind of resource management games. Is there anything like that you've taken from Banished or um, any of your any of your other sim games that you uh, would want to apply to a Castlevania game? Well, they seem to pretty pretty much get away from micromanagement, so you, it, it'd have to be one of those things where, in order to enjoy the full scope of things, you would have to kind of set it and forget it. Yeah. But also have the ability to sort of revisit so we, your characters. Well, you have to think about what your resources are. You have to keep the monsters fed. Sure. And like I said, to make candles, you have to, you're have using fat and hair. So your resources are people. Like okay. the villagers that are near the castle, or the adventurers, or the brotherhood, or whatever that attack the castle. So you got to manage that resource. You can't just go into a, a village and wipe everyone out. You got to go in. You got to sneak in, take a couple of people. Or you got to harvest them and make them mate. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we so worried about these monsters trying to leave, though? That would be like, is there a rival castle that maybe? No, they don't. Back? They don't want to leave because they have to exist within Dracula's castle because that's where they're. The source of oh, we need to, we need to change that. There needs to be more of a threat. There needs to be a reason. Like you're either building up to have the best Castlevania. Like maybe, maybe it's more of like you play as the real estate guy that sold this castle to Dracula. That you like this is the, this is the location for you because it can support no, see, all this stuff. See, it's a resource management survival game. The point of the game is to collect resources and survive. <laughs> There's no in. There's no in game. There's no. Well, it sounds a whole lot like Banished then, because Banished doesn't have much of an in game either. <laughs> right, right. And so did like uh, well, Don't Star. You did say Dracula's bored, so that's the that's the yeah, like he doesn't do anything. He literally is just Wait. sitting in his throne room. He's not interacting. Yeah, you just like, have he's to, not you the just, one. You have to he's keep not the one stress level. Orders. You have to keep his stress level low. <laughs> that's like that's basically your enemy that you have to you have to gauge. Is, you just give uh, Dracula a lot of weed. <laughs> You don't want to cause too much cheat commotion, codes. or you'll you'll upset you'll upset Dracula. Dr- dr- right. Drugs is cheat codes. Right. Dracula, dr- count count Dracula. That's a <laughs> there you isn't go. that a Rob Zombie song? Um, okay, Jason. I know you haven't been gaming, but let's. I, I want I want to just kind of break the rust off here. Talk about what you have been doing, and then maybe even get into uh, like what you what you want to play next, because uh, I'm worried about your 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 game diet. Well, I have completely backed away from Minecraft pretty much right before I went to South by. <gasps> Don't say. <laughs> we Don't we say we made the we made the decision to to sort of let the 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 Minecraft server expire. That's a weird word, but uh, we did, didn't renew the did we didn't we renew the, the contract. Or did Ethan it, and I okay. okay. Ethan and I we it was coming up, and so Ethan and I kind of talked, and it was just like okay. Let's let's let everyone go their separate I was not sense. involved in that decision. You was not. You were not. So I am super upset right now, even though if I've been would... logged in for months. <laughs> All that work that I put in to my crappy hovel. No. If, if, if you would like a map download, I can provide one for you. <laughs> For you to go in all by your lonesome and spend hours upon hours, much like I was whenever we had the server going. Yeah, at least you were you were filming it though, like you were. Yeah. Pre- you were producing something. Yeah. And your so Minecraft's and your dead. Is. Well, it, it, no it, one's it playing will be it coming, anymore. It will be no, yes, no more, <laughs> no more. It will be coming back on my YouTube ch- channel in various forms. I'll <laughs> okay. just say. Okay. Um, but I have not actually touched it since since uh, going to South by. I've been playing a lot of Starbound. How the hell's that going? L- it's, it's, it's going pretty good. I've got a couple of different characters. I have one whole character that I actually wasn't... I decided I wasn't going to film him at all. I was just going to sort of he's, relax and He's not very photogenic. Play. He's not. He's a, he's a, he's a robot. So, um, but then today, right before we started recording, I was like, I have to show people the crazy crap I've got myself into. So I, I kind of broke that and... And uh, went into that. Space, so space hijinks. I play that game. I don't even know what it is. I play space hijinks. <laughs> Been filming those. I actually picked up Space Engineers. I have not touched that. Also picked up um, Anti Squad, which looks a lot of fun. But again, Anti-squad. haven't quite. What's Anti Squad? In- Engineers Anti Squad is-, is is like a turn based. Um, it, it looks like a kind of a modern. Um, I'm not exactly quite sure what it is to be honest. It list, it's it's turn based, which I'm like, like mm-hmm. if I read the words turn based, I'm like, okay, 
<laughs> sell me the sell me the rest of it. I it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of XCOM, but uh, more so just like XCOM. A real, yeah. Real, yeah, exactly. Did someone just say XCOM? A real fun, Easy. just sort of zany. Um, it just looks like you've got a squad of people that you go in and you have to kind of. Uh, you've got. I don't think they're cops, but it's kind of like a. <laughs> It's, it, it it reminds me of kind of. Um, I don't, I don't think they advice. they work like, for any kind of institution or anything, but they're definitely fighting, <laughs> fighting crime. There's justice uh, involved. Would it just be a whole hell of a lot crimes. easier if I just read you the synopsis for the game? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh boy, let me see if I can find it. Anyways, so um, uh, military tactical response unit. That's kind of what it's based on. It's 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 a uh, early it's access, so there's. Not all. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I, I picked it up. It's like four bucks. You know, it's it's it's, it's one of those games. It, it feels like $4. one of those games that could be. That's why we didn't have to think about it too hard. I'll wait well, it feels like sale. one of those games that could be on um could be on like a handheld device. Uh, uh, I've had I've seen okay. those like so tiger, the tiger electronics thing. <laughs> Okay, it says, hardened military professionals tired of bureaucracy, politics, and serving the armed forces have an established private uh, paramilitary formation located in the South United States. That's all it says. It just, okay. you have to see it. To, it, it sounds completely like it's You're nothing. You're in charge but... of the, their one snowplow. <laughs> I'm getting our stories confused. So, uh, yeah. full circle. I, like I know nothing about the game. I just had some money to burn, and I picked it up, so... Basically, it has just you have a bunch of little characters. They have their own backstory, um, and they're all kind of mercenaries. And you go in and you kind of like just blow shit up and and sort of attack people. And you have certain goals. Like I said, I haven't touched it, but I will be doing it soon. So okay. by the next time we record, I'll, Touching, I'll probably have soon. more to say about it. By any chance, does one of the characters pity uh, any any fools of any sort? <laughs> I'm sure they probably do, but um, okay. we'll let the game speak for itself once I finally get around to actually playing it. Um, and then. Gosh, what else have I been doing? Oh, uh, Timber and Stone. They finally released a new update for that game after five months. So, <clears throat> How'd that make you I feel? Have, that made me feel pretty damn good <laughs> for sticking with it for so long. <laughs> um, but they have completely rewritten uh, the settlers, the villagers. They've they reacted to things completely different now. Um, and now they just will, scream and run away. Well, they actually will fight, or they will f- they will flee if they don't have enough courage. Or if their morale is down, so that was something you kind of had to deal with before they would just kind of stand there and just instead of just walking to their doom, right? They just stand <laughs> there and get shivved, and then you'd be screwed for the Eat, next, you know, eaten by days. spiders while picking pretty, berries out of a bush. Pretty much. So everything has been uh, kind of retooled. They've added about thirty thousand lines of code to the game. Uh, you should but do also a live re- stream where you go over each one. <laughs> <laughs> Each line of code. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've they've removed thirty part episode series. They've removed about twenty two thousand, so it's about eight thousand total lines Man. of code that they've actually added. Most of those were comments. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the big swatches, yeah, of paragraphs of comments. Oh, but the the, the yeah. difference about this game, though, is that you're basically buying it directly from the developers, and by mm-hmm. going to the forums, you're basically talking to the th- the three guys. Now it used to be one. The three, or, it might be even four. Timber, three or Stone, four guys. and what's the third guy's name? <laughs> game. Baby Spice. <laughs> One point five is the 1. new game. Yeah. <laughs> just hired. But you know, you know, I've talked about the game in the past. It it seems like a lot of the stuff they've done is an improvement. There's still a long way to go. Um, you know, th- there are certain things that are still kind of Last broken. Time you were, yeah, you were hesitant to like keep streaming the game. So, will is is this at a point where you're gonna revisit it? Well, I yeah, I've got my my first video went up yesterday. Okay. I've got two more coming this week, and cool. I am planning on doing a live stream here on uh, the Horrible Night channel. Nice. So, not sure when, but it will be coming at some point, so I can kind of dive into the game for you guys. Cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, I'm excited about it. It's it's again, it's one of those games where not you know, Starbound is a, a, a it's a they listen to the, the the people, but it's kind of an overblown community of people. Like mm. you kind of have to get a lot of people on your side before something will get changed. Whereas Timber and Stone is kind of a game right now where it's still small enough where if you kind of, you know, explain your idea and kind of explain where you're coming from, there's a good chance it could get implemented or changed. And they also added a new uh, bug tracking system. So instead of just going to the forums and just like, typing everything out, you can actually go and do like an official bug report that they can open and close and you can upload attachments. And it's just, it's just getting to the point now where they're able to support the game 
more professionally, which is really oh, nice. nice. But yeah, that that bodes well for the future then. So yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me, tell me about the weapons in Starbound, because you're uh, in your best and uh, oh, worst gosh. gaming decision. You <laughs> you wrote down the same thing. Okay, so yes, it is a it's the double edged not sword ah. but gun, <laughs> if 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 that's even possible, it which I'm sure it would be in Starbound in Gears of War. Yes. Um, so I've you know I've been playing Starbound for months and months and months and months and been just vying to get myself a gun in this game. Cannot. For the life of me, either build one or have someone drop one. Well, this past weekend, I played for about six hours and finally got a gun. And of course, here I'm just like celebrating, like I got myself a gun. Yeah. Did, did Obama come and take it away? No. Uh, <laughs> so I did. Space Obama taking your guns I, away. I did have to wait two weeks to get the permit. So get him, a, get him in a space gun show, man. Walk and right out. So, with him. of course, you know I'm ready to go. I'm ready to like, you know. Shoot down some minis and pew pew pew. Mm-hmm. Nothing like the worst weapon I've ever had <laughs> in the game, and I'm oh. just like, you sons of bitches, because at this point, you know, you're shooting the gun, something's charging at you, and it's a very uncomfortable. <laughs> I need feeling. this gun, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it does nothing, so it's like it doesn't, you know, stop them from moving forward towards you. So then at that point, you're like, well, back to the old. Knife routine. Unfortunately, he made the sandwich gun. It was just giving yeah. the charging beast food. Can you so, throw the gun? Does it run out of ammo? Te- you, technically, you can't can throw the throw gun. It? It's <laughs> more so just getting something out of your inventory. It has has no, no uh, okay. skill set whatsoever. So, well, it never does. But like, so, are there uh, are there better guns in the store? Like, do you? Is there at least a? Is there? If I want to use guns, well, is there something to look forward to? I've yet to I've yet to actually run into either building or uh, or buying better weapons in the game, but I have gotten better guns since then. Mm. But I'm still pretty much on the side of you either using one giant like axe or two separate knives or something. It just uh, you know the the guns are effective at some point, but eventually you're just getting pounded by somebody else, and you're just like, okay, at this point I need to just I need oh, to stab right. somebody. You need to pound them back. Yeah. And how so, do you, how do you buy stuff in the game? You just said you could buy. Stuff. Well, you have to you have to run into uh, NPCs that are selling things, and normally they only sell either food or clothing. So, uh, very rarely do you find anybody that sells like potion, like health potions, or uh, they I don't know what else you would call them, but they look like needles or whatever that you can you can take. Um, I actually got I actually got a wizard hat. Like, sounds like food to me. Yeah, so, well, I bought a wizard hat from a guy selling potions, so I thought that was appropriate. Um, and I have no idea where that guy is anymore, so I guess that's my loss. The store only sells wizard hats and guns. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm sure they're... I know that, I know that store. <laughs> it's yeah. Abercrombie & Fitch. <laughs> uh, they actually did used to sell weapons back in the day before uh, Mr... Uh, you mean wallet chains? Wallet chains, no. Yeah, that was dangerous. Well, it was before Hemingway blew his head off with a shotgun, and then they decided they probably shouldn't sell guns anymore. Whoa. Learning all kinds of things about Apple. history lesson. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's it's it. You know, every time I play Starbound, I feel like I'm scratching at the surface. And of course, I'm recording these videos. And during the duration of these videos, I'm asking all these really stupid questions, and I feel like I know nothing about the game. And of course, people are like, "Well, you you know, like they're like responding to to they're giving me answers to questions I didn't realize <laughs> I asked while I was playing. And so I feel like they're just being like sarcastic. Like, well, you don't know how to play this game. Then I go back and watch the video. I'm like, holy crap! I asked like 50 questions. <laughs> like, I don't know about this. Maybe she wants to tell me. And I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those things. So I'm sure you can, you know, the, it's just the sky's the limit with the game. And of course, you can also mod the game, which is just something I will probably try to never to get into because I'm afraid I'll just break my game and <laughs> have to well, start from to scratch. Do, but just get it out of the way. Just break your game, and then and then you can experiment from there. Like, well, you know, they've got like a Mass Effect expansion thing for it that looks crazy. Um, you you used to be able, or yeah, there's a mod where you can like expand the size of your ship. But apparently, at, right before the the podcast, I guess they just announced that you can actually your ship starts off broken and you have to repair it. And as you get better and better at the game, your ship actually increases in size. Yeah, it does naturally. Hey, yeah. yeah. Checked out. It's been that way some for four of those, hours. Uh, some of those uh, convenience store pills you can pick up. That was a dick. Our dick pills segment. Yeah. Check that off the so. list. <laughs> also, pills, there's spaceships. another. 
There is another game everyone should check out. It is um, a game called City Bound. I'll just give a shout out to that game. It is a guy basically um, doing what SimCity should have done. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think and, I did read about that. Yeah, so check that out. Um, he's on Twitter, City Bound Sim. Cool. And uh, it sounds like it's one of those games where there's not going to be a Kickstarter or anything. It sounds like another one of those Timber and Stone kind of things where you give him a certain amount of money and you get in at some point. Gotcha. And a lot of the stuff that he's been publishing looks really interesting, so I want to give a quick shout-out to that because he actually just tweeted something, and it looks pretty interesting. Nice, nice. Anything outside of your... Uh, your so you're looking at Anti-Squad and Space Engineers coming up, but like... Uh, anything else got your attention or space engineers just kind of frightens me because it looks like it has a, such a high learning curve, but I got a good deal on it. Okay. Um, it's pretty much uh, a lot of people say it's Minecraft in space, which is weird because there's, like, <laughs> you know, there's certain things that are already doing that in Minecraft, but um, apparently it you know, it's very technical. Mm. And so the other game I, I really want to look into is uh, the, what is it, Space Base of Nine or whatever? Yeah, Double Fine's little... Yeah, I want to see if they've made any improvements on that. It since sounded I really bare bones saw. when they released it. So, yeah, I'd be curious to see if they've had anything significant to it. So Yeah, just th- those kind of games are, are what are sort of capturing my, my attention cool. right now. So cool. um, hopefully I'll dive into those and have more to say about them. All right, Jordan, I'm going to start with... Uh, your worst gaming decision lately. Hmm. So Planicide 2 has pulled me back in. And it's chiefly your fault, though, because we did a whole night a couple of weeks ago and played it. Oh, man, I hate that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I, and I think the problem, you, when we had lunch last week, I'd said something to you, and you said, are, are you having fun? Like, is that game fun? And so every time I play it, I sit there and go, wait, am I having fun? Six hours later, am I having yeah. fun? Wait, wait, did I have fun? Wait, how long, yeah, how much time just passed? And I think the problem is, it, it's an FPS, but it's also an MMORPG. And so, like, you so you played Warcraft. Now, I don't want to start talking about Warcraft and get you into... I can, I, back can, and, I can make that get happen. You back in, like, get you back into Warcraft. I wanted this to be a 90-minute show, but we can keep going. You, you probably asked yourself that while you were sitting there in, like, the forest, killing the same animal over and over and over again, you know, trying to gain no, no, some experience. I don't know what you're referencing. You probably you probably asked yourself like, "Am I having fun?" Yeah, I was. So, because this game has a grind to it, because you're yeah, it does. Yeah, you're gaining experience. Like whenever you like, I'm playing as an engineer, so every time I throw down an ammo pack and somebody uses it, I get that little ching noise that mm-hmm. oh, I just got a little bit of experience. And then when I heal a robot or a tank or something like that, it's ching. It's that I get a little bit of experience. It's that grind that you notice when your friends sign off. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> when you're by we're yourself, not doing, we're not doing dumb well, shit in trucks anymore. I'm playing this game, and I'm, no, that happened because I, I want to get a, a new scope for this gun. I was in a I was in a platoon yeah. with a bunch of guys, and we were I was having a lot of fun. Like we were rolling into a base, and then after about 20, 30 minutes, we'd we'd run the enemy out, or we'd take over a base, and then uh, the platoon started to fall apart. So I went ahead and left it, and then I just found myself sitting in a one of these bases with like three or four other guys and for some reason someone's it was under attack Mm -hmm. and so just me and three random people we started to defend it but we were defending it from three or four other random people who were attacking the base so it was this real like I don't know it was a terrible battle of like me running out shooting a guy and dying but killing him and then respawning and then he would respawn at his thing and then we'd meet each other again and kill both of each other. And that went on for about 15 or 20 minutes. Just not not really. Like, it wasn't Call of Duty. It wasn't like this fast-paced, oh, yeah. real, you know, fast FPS thing. No, it was just this real slow, like, all right, they, get, they got a tank driving around, so I got to go find where the tank's at and set up my little anti-vehicle turret and take a, sh- you know, take a pot shot at it. And then he finds me and blows me up with his tank. Then I respawn and run back out. <laughs> just kind of kept going back and forth like that. But, man, I don't know. I can't stop thinking about the game. <laughs> oh no, I totally like. I keep, I keep wanting to just get back in there because there's more stuff I want to unlock. Like there are better guns, there's better perks for my engineer, and if I can just get a hundred more experience, we're so what you, you are game. you are going back for the items and not so much. I was gonna say like those little random encounters that you're talking about, like the little isolated, yeah, like six little dudes combat, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like that's why I play is just for those little random scenarios to pop up, but. Um, you're actually I could I, I've caught myself headed down that path of getting into the uh, the kind of weapon grind, but of 
uh, stayed off of it. So what what made you get back into it? Because you took a break from the game, and it was that couple of weeks ago when we played it for the just, whole night. We just gave I you had, a, just gave you a hit, had, and you needed. I had more. forgotten. I had forgotten all about the game. I went to I went to rehab. I was in group. You know, <laughs> but just I talked it out with a lot of people, and I you know I got past it. And then, yeah, you just, man, you brought you brought me back. And then I started thinking about it, and I started remembering all that, how much fun. And then I just, one night, I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I finished up The Witcher 2, and I was like, yeah, I don't have anything to play. And then I'll jump back into Planet Side. And then I uh, got right into it with, like, a 40-person 40, 40 platoon and just had, like, just... A Can't lot of fun for like, for like for like three hours. Had a lot of fun, That's cool. and then I was right right back into it. But I almost put money into it this this week because right. I, well, You're... I started asking, my, I started questioning this grind part of it because mm-hmm. because I, I think at some point. You'll you'll get to the, you'll get to a point in the game where you've unlocked everything. Like if you're a paying member, you get um, you just automatically have XP bonuses. So every time you get, you're gaining experience a lot faster. But then those people, I sure just put money into the game, and then um, you can buy things cheaper if you're using real money than if you use the in-game currency. Mm-hmm. I assume these people have everything unlocked. I can't imagine how much different the game is when you don't care. Like I don't care if I kill this guy. I don't like it doesn't matter that I get this stuff repaired. Like you're, then you're, you're just then you're just playing an FPS. You are just flying planes around, you're just driving I feel tanks like those around. guys need to like have their own continent, their own island cuz you're talking about rolling around with platoons uh and, and they're and all they want to do is take positions. And like, like they we weren't were, they weren't hanging around like you so you go to no. like you go to like a waypoint or you go to a base and you capture it. And, then, and it takes like and it takes like fifteen minutes to capture it. But like then once you, you once you're there, once you, you have control of it. Yeah, it takes another like eight minutes. So it literally means you have you, everyone has to stand around for about eight minutes. But then yeah. you get your points. You get your upgrade yeah, these points. Large, yeah, these large platoons they don't wait around. As soon as the base is captured, we move on to the next one. So yeah, you never. It, whenever I'm in these platoons, I never get any of the base capture points, which is like a, interesting. It's a lot of points. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, like game's been out for. A couple of years now, so it's kind of it's interesting to see like what are the what are those high end players doing, and they are just rolling through the game. Still, it looks like so. Um, They're also going to nerf my uh, anti vehicle turret next month. They, which, well, man, I have I have so much fun. You so as an engineer, you can deploy a turret. And it took me forever to unlock it, um, but then you're stationary and you you fire off a rocket that you can then drive through the sky. Like I was on top of this. Uh, um, the edge of this building, and so I could, and I've got my uh, draw distance on real far because I have a high-end PC, and I saw this guy like probably, like 300 meters away running, and I could just see this tiny little black dot off in the horizon on the just running across this field. So I launch a rocket and then just kind of dry steer it through the air and hit him. It just it's like such a gratifying feeling to just because that guy had no, he just died. He's just I've running through a field. I've been there. And then just. And then just he was dead. Oh, and then you hear that then that little cha ching. <laughs> oh, man, it's so gratifying. I can't wait till you put money in it. I really I like, won't. You're like I Mr. Won't. Anti-free to play, so Well, I almost did it because that um because I'm still using the starter gun that like the engineer starts with. And then I was like, man, there's all these other guns. The all these other guns have to be better. Well, the game's got a VR training mode, so you can just jump into it and try everything out. No, the starting gun is as good as all the other guns, That's if not explain. just if not just Spoilers. a little bit better. Yeah, <laughs> I, see, so, yeah so, I feel like sorry. you took, took all sorry, my carrots everybody. away. Uh, so I'm just not ever going to be good at that game. Good to know that I should not put any more time into it. No, I still <sighs> I still hard, really like that game. I still really like that game, but I've kind of settled into. I really only want to play it when we have like six to eight people at least to run around and, yeah. and, and do our dumb shit. So. I've, I've tried to play by myself, and I, I you just, can't, I'm you no cannot, good. you really can't. You have got to just join a squad or a platoon. Like mm. it, there's really nothing to do if if you're trying to play by yourself, unless you, like you find like a huge like thousand person battle going on, and then like all right, I'm just I'm gonna play as a medic, and I'm just gonna heal people because mm. people you know people are gonna be dying all around me. Like, you can do that, but. Like it's a lot funner when you're with a group because then you're like doing these coordinated movements with like with a group of forty people and that when that stuff works it feels it feels real awesome. Cool. Um, feel, feel I, powerful. I had a little bit of a moment last week, really just grinding away on a game, trying to figure out: Am I 
Am I having fun? Um, <laughs> it's a good question to stop and ask after about an hour or two. But it didn't. Ma- it didn't matter. But my worst gaming decision was uh, choosing to stream the Towerfall Ascension campaign. <laughs> I started. Because I tried to. I, was, I just started watching that before. Not not because it's. I mean, it is a fantastic. It is a fantastic game. We actually did our arcade challenge at the office with it. We had a round robin tournament. Like that game, is everything they say as far as local multiplayer goes. That game is a blast yeah. to play against people. The, and the campaign is solid. Like I really enjoy it. But the problem it looks is, great too. The pixel art's awesome. Oh, I mean, it's one of those. It's like on that spelunky level of just kind of perfectly mm-hmm. designed. Just everything. Yeah. Everything goes together so well. But the problem is when you pair up me with a campaign like that that has a, a, a finite end and I'm going to choose to live stream just the campaign. If anybody remembers back to when I was streaming, um, what's the, oh shit, what's the name of that game? Um, I want to be the guy. I want to be the. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to be. Yeah, I think it's I want to I wanna be, be the, the guy. guy. I am stubborn when I know that I can beat a game and I will stick with it. Long story short, I can assumed. You that, can you beat that game? I, be the, I, <laughs> I don't be think you beat. I want to be the. Game. I don't think you beat that one. But um, I started streaming Towerfall Ascension with the the idea of oh I'm gonna play through campaign. It's probably like ninety minutes long, and then I'm gonna jump and I'm gonna I'm gonna play a different game. I'm gonna play Diablo three, um, stream some of that. So it took me about ninety minutes to get to the second to last level. And I probably spent another hour on just the second to last level. <laughs> Which took Are you trying to do a, a perfectionist thing? Because I saw that they no, told it just, you it, uh, no. the time. I was just trying to it win. It was hard? I was just trying to... Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> so I played that boss level for 45 minutes or or an hour. And then I got There's to a the, boss? There's a boss level? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. And then... um, Yeah, they, yeah, they gave... The characters in the game are really cool, but um, then it took me to the final level, which which is just okay. Yeah, so the second last level is a boss level. You fight the king, and he's like got kind of superpowers and boss patterns and other like the waves of enemies are still going at you, coming at you. Um, the final level is just your standard eight waves of enemies, but they're just in this combination that makes them really difficult. Um. So when I when I looked back on all the other levels, the other I want to say I want to say there's I want to say there's nine levels on all, all the other the seven other levels, the most I died on any of those levels was four times. I think I died around twenty times on the boss level with the king. The final level, after um, I want to say three hours of streaming just on that level, I died ninety <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> in that, Gosh. in that, the first stream. <laughs> I don't think you're. It I don't got think to you're be using Twitch right, man. <laughs> yeah, it was like the first stream oh, got to wow. the point. It was like it was just too late. I was like, I need to take a break. I'm getting worse at this game. It's going to be one of those situations where I'll jump on tomorrow and I'll just beat it in like five minutes because I'll just like be fresh and something will happen. Something will click. And then that five minutes took and <laughs> turned into another two hours. Um, in the meantime, uh, Aaron from our site decides to pick up Tower Fall, and I believe uh, he beat the last level in eight attempts. So, <laughs> back to your question of whether it was difficult or not, I don't know. Um, let's just say I didn't make the finals in our arcade. I don't believe I don't believe any of Aaron's uh, Spelunky scores. <laughs> I, he's He's got some hacks, hacking skills that we don't know about that he's uh, not talked about. I, don't believe, I, don't believe anything. That he's I saw done. it. I saw it live. It, it's real. <laughs> it the, makes no the, sense. The difficulty or just Justin's inability? I, to, I apparently I'm not do, good at platforming games. I like I I'm starting to like. I thought you know I thought maybe those retro platformers that I grew up with like that style of game I, I that I'd still have. You know, some skills then, in that. Then you remembered but, you were terrible playing no, those as a kid the one, as the, well. The one-two punch of, like, what I consider an equal, Aaron, like, being able to just blow through this campaign with how much I struggled and then getting my ass handed to me in our <laughs> tournament. Like, uh, anyway, that game is a ton of fun. Don't, like, I love I love everything about how that game feels. The, the free-for-all four-player matches are ridiculous. So um, you've not, you haven't beaten the campaign then? I beat the the normal campaign, but there's a hardcore mode that I've got to work my way through. I'll probably keep going back to it, but 
Um, okay. Local multiplayer is definitely where it's at. And, um, yeah. You know, the best mechanic about that game, you know, they, they've even compared it to like a, a Super Smash Brothers, but it's one screen. Um, you you all control archers and you have a limited um, supply of arrows, one hit kills. Um, you can jump on enemies to kill them too. But so when you shoot and miss with your arrow, you have to go collect your arrow to get more ammo. And so that just encourages you to kind of bounce around the level. And the way the 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 fact is like if you fall through the bottom you'll come up at the top of the level or if you go off to run off to the left you'll show up on the right hand side so the lovers kind of interconnected that way it just it's really frantic and really fun and uh my favorite little throwaway feature of the game is um you can save a replay of of your of the final kill or whatever and it saves it as an animated gif that's <laughs> awesome yeah. yeah so um but let's get on to some uh, some some better gaming decisions, Jordan. Um, you've got your best decision or the thing you're most excited about. Pick, just pick one of those. Um, yeah, I talked about Thief. Um, finally got it downloaded. It, uh, uh, Koopa told me that it was uh, on sale on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And there was, a, there was a moment where I was like, wait a minute, if I buy it on Amazon, how do I install it in Steam? Hmm... So I, I didn't buy it, and then I came back like an hour or two later, and I was like, no, I'm going to do a little bit of research. So I found where on the Amazon page it said the DRM was through Steam. I was like, okay, well, then. But once I purchased the game, I didn't, it didn't have like a button or a code or anything like that. So it took me a minute to figure out, like, Did you, you know. To, had, maybe you have to steal it. That would be awesome. Like the only way to acquire <laughs> Thief. And then I, then I opened up BitTorrent, and I just got, then yeah. I just got the game. Um, you get achievement game, when you log in. My local game stop. I'm kidding. I'm never going to GameStop. Um, <laughs> no, the the uh, Walmart now. The product ID, like the mm. you know, on the the Amazon product yeah. page after I bought it, it, just had like a num an ID. So I just put that into Steam, and yeah, Steam oh. was like, oh, yeah, oh, you bought Thief. Well, sure, let's download it. Sure. <laughs> it took four. It's like twenty gigs, and for some reason, like regardless of your internet connection, Steam like maxes you out at like a megabyte. <laughs> Uh, there's a, you might check it. There's a setting. There's a setting. Yeah, there's, I, there's a I, setting. Uh, I looked. I couldn't. I couldn't find it. So I, I went. So I, I started downloading at like ten, ten o'clock or something <laughs> like that. And the game said, you know, it'll be done in sixteen hours. I was like, screw this. Sixteen days. I'll, I'll play Planet Side. I'll play Planet Side for sixteen <laughs> hours. Well, the problem is, you know, you for some yeah. reason it won't download games while you're playing a game. You can change. So that I was like, so I was like, all right, I'll, I'll leave my computer. I, can you? Yes. <laughs> I looked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will walk you through that. Yeah. Live stream settings for uh, Steam Twitch. for do Jordan. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll do it. We'll do it. Twitch does uh, we'll do it. S- uh, we'll Steam do a check, settings. We'll do a checkpoint or something about yeah. <laughs> Steam settings. But I, I look for that stuff. But I also just, I also really wanted to play Planet Side 2 some more, so I didn't put that much time into it. That would be the most but, condescending checkpoint episode, just walking you through <laughs> how to use Steam. <laughs> a lot of, okay, yeah, like click it. that, now click click your user, per, now click settings, okay. Right, so 16 okay. days later, you finished downloading it. I finally got the th- freaking thing downloaded, um, but it was real late last night, and I was real exhausted, but I was like, I gotta play, I wanna play this oh. game a little bit before the show tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, man, it... You like it? It is it is exactly the kind of game I want to play. Like it's, cool. yeah, it's open world, but it's got that um, like, I don't know. I guess I'd compare it to like the Legend of Zelda open world, where okay. it's like, okay, man, I can get. I see there's a there's a window up there I can get to, but I don't know how to get to it. Use yet. a Pona. She'll help you get up there. <laughs> so I pull out my Ar- Arcarina, yeah, <laughs> and I play Song of Storms, and it starts raining. All right, now follow me. It's and then I complex. use the water arrow. Mm-hmm. And then I yeah. blink to the top of the wait. That's still, still yeah. So steampunk. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I, I never played Dishonored. Um, but I watched. I mean, I watched a, a playthrough of it. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I would enjoy playing Dishonored though, because the one thing I really like about this game is, um, so after playing um Skyrim, because that's so I, I got the uh, itch to play this game because I was like, eh, at you know the game's fifty bucks. I've not heard a lot of great things. I'll just watch someone play it. The first thing that you do in the game is, um, like, you pick a lock, mm-hmm. and as soon as I saw that little like UI come up, it reminded me of uh, Skyrim. Like, yeah. that was the last. My last thing I did I in mean, Skyrim was the Thief's Guild. Oh man, I love that so much. The best, the thing I love about this is all the side missions. 
it'll be like, oh, you got to go steal something from from some guy in Skyrim. You would do that, but it would always end in a in a battle. Well, I got to go. I got to go steal this thing, but you don't. You got to go into a dungeon, kill everybody in the dungeon, and then you know pick the thing up from his dead body. No, this one you don't fight. You, you don't have to. Yeah. Well, the encounters I keep right? having pretty much he pretty much sucks at fighting. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing is like so. So I started to fight someone, and the game's like, oh, use V to dodge. Well, my finger won't get over to where the V key is. I keep hitting C, and so which is That's the crouch right. key. That's so he just right. stands up, and then the guy will swing us, and then I just crouch back down. So I'm like, kind of, I'm trying to like bob and weave. But, oh, so no, so, so there is combat in the game. You, you just personally can't. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if like I switch to a controller, if maybe it'll be a little bit better because like s- some of the keys are just a little bit further like the observed keyboard key problems is, is why. Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> Keyboard. It's, we'll do a checkpoint. We'll go through my <laughs> Steam settings, and then we'll go through my problem with, um, with keyboard we'll controls. See. Yeah. See, but yeah. no, man, I am. Yeah, like so. I you do like the intro thing, um, and then the game's like, okay, here's your next mission, but here's the city. Mm-hmm. I spent, I spent the um, probably next two and a half hours just trying to find everything in this city. I'm like, I love it. I love, cool. I love side mission stuff like that. That, ga- that game yeah. got... I, I, I didn't really get it. I mean, it didn't get you know, annihilated it, or anything in the review, it but keeps it got a bad It, it keeps bad being... It, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's because of Dishonored, right? That's yeah. why everyone can't, ma- can't judge the game on its own merits. Right. But then also, I think it's kind of suffering from like the, uh, like the Remember Me problem, too, where they, they're trying to no, do one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one specific thing. Can you get, but, are you getting paid for this shit? Seriously. He has to. He <laughs> has to. You know Capcom's <laughs> not going to make another one of those, right? You don't need to keep... That's too bad. Like, What's Red Member Me's problem besides her glorious ass? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. With that, beautiful but, butt. that beautiful butt. That beautiful butt. No, it's just like the game... And Thief does this, where it's just... It does one thing. It does stealth. Mm-hmm. Oh, and okay. I think I think and I think that's the pro. That I think maybe that was a problem where you have a game like Dishonored where you can sneak or you can fight and you can do both of them at the same time and you can unlock all these magical powers. Where I I don't think you can unlock anything in Thief as much. Like I found um, one. I bought one tool that now that I have it, I can um, unlock other areas. And then I just discovered oh, there's another tool that I need to unlock some other areas. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I don't think like I'm, I don't think you're ever going to upgrade. Like you can kind of upgrade, like you can upgrade your bow once. You can upgrade, yeah. like how many arrows you can carry. You can do it. Once, you can do all that stuff like once, and then that's it. So, well, uh, go ahead, George. Go ahead, Jason. Well, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll say th- there are a couple of things about the game that I really enjoy. It does. You, you do honestly right from the start want to compare it to um, Dishonored. You really do because it just they they kind of look the same. They kind of feel the same. But what I really enjoy about the game is uh, that you can actually play it a couple different ways. You can actually go through the entire game. There's an actual like um, skill set where if you don't steal anything, you get points for that. Like, there, do you really? Yeah. There's like a so I there's. Was, I will. Watch someone. Uh, I, I watched someone doing a let's play, and that's what they were doing. And I, yeah. I was pretty sure they they were doing it like they were playing the game wrong. <laughs> yeah. But okay, yeah. I didn't. I didn't yeah. realize you could you could actually play the whole game without. Yeah, you can stealing go through the anything. whole. You can try to go through the whole that's game awesome. without actually stealing anything, and then then that's a real thing. Or you can go through and you can steal everything. Or you does can... the name of the game change? I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, so, good. Like to I was, sneak. I was getting upset that like people were kind of. Um, discrediting it, discrediting it because it was kind of a one-trick pony. It's it's only doing stealth. I was like, the game is named Thief. You're not allowed <laughs> to be upset if that's right. all it is. Um, but that's and that was actually a problem. A problem with the original Thief um, was you had a sword, and uh, yeah, you, you you could. And it's the way I played the original Thief. You you didn't have to sneak through the game. You could just sword fight with. With everyone in the game, if you like, if you found a doorway, you could just fight. Get every you know, you aggro. Everyone comes running at you. We'll get them stuck in a doorway. And then you can just fight one guy at a time. Yeah. So, so it was kind of the the problem of the original thing. But the thing that put me off in re- reading about it is not that it was only trying to do that do that one thing. Like I kind of know what I'm getting into, and that like from the live streams I've watched, it looks pretty awesome at doing 
doing just that, doing the doing the thief stuff. But it, I was kind of put off by the fact they tried to make a more grandiose story that this thief is affecting, you know, this end of the world outcome, and that kind of like uh, they, that kind of made me a little bit disinterested in it. Like, just stick- <laughs> it's a video, it's a video game. Justin. I know, I know, but. <laughs> But it's just I I wasn't. You don't like those grandiose, dire, into the world scenarios it's, in your video games. I not in all my video games. Like I just like <laughs> I'd almost like it, you know treat it more like a you know individual thief missions. Like do just make it a stealth game that's great at what it does. Like that right. was just surprising that they reeled in the gameplay scope to make it just thief, but then wanted to add that story bit. Like, I don't, I don't know the right way to solve that, but it just, it rubbed me the wrong way. And then, um, but it also, um, the other side of it was the, the value proposition of that, at, that at full price, like after playing games like shadow warrior last year, that I still think that there is this 30 to $40 game price that hasn't really been explored and thief might've yeah. been perfect for it. Yeah, uh, man. But the, like I've got my graphics on all the way. Mm-hmm. That that game it looks, pretty looks good. incredible, and That's at cool. about a thirty forty dollar budget, yeah. I, like that would have been the thing that would have taken the hit, right? Is like the draw but distance. But would that have graphics. really? Does that really matter for a game like? I'm not going for th- to thief to like push my tech either. Like I've got mm-hmm. plenty of games to do that too. So like real, th- go stylized with it. Make it like something. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. There, there are ways around that. Like. It's kind of. I wish more games would identify like whether or not they're going to be, you know, the showcase, you know, new 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 graphics showcase, and the games that yeah. are just like, you yeah. know, get, yeah. pick a style and just and, and and make it feel authentic and don't worry about it. But well, and obviously most of it, you know, happens in the dark. So yeah, I think you're on <laughs> great dark tech. Well, I think you. I think you make a good point. I mean, you can get away with a lot of sort of lower res graphics with the darkness. So, yeah, I, th- I think you. I think that that's a good point. The other thing I will say is, uh, I haven't actually played the game, but I have been watching uh, two different people play it, and I will say they are two completely different experiences because cool. they are choosing to play it two different ways. So, yeah, I, I think you know if <laughs> if if it is the price point for me that is keeping me away from the game at the moment. Yeah, I'm I'd gonna... say if it if it was in that thirty thirty five dollar range, I would totally pick it up because it seems just like one that's of those what really I, fun that's what games I, that you you could do. So that's what I bought it for. It okay. was on. Right. It was like, it was like twelve bucks off on Amazon. Cool. cool. I still I would have spent fifty dollars on it. It it I knew I knew it was going to be exactly yeah. um, the game that I wanted to play, and I'm having a ton of fun with it. Yeah, I mean. I mean I, I kind of wrote it off before after some of the reads, but actually like seeing people play it, like I do want to play it. I'm just going to wait for that, for that price drop and that moment where I want to get my stealth on. Yeah. I think you'll enjoy Jordan from what I've seen. I've watched, you know, at least eight, nine hours of gameplay. So I think I, I should probably watch somebody else uh, play it too. I, I wonder if like, are you watching somebody that's like fighting their way through it? Cause yeah. So I'm watching somebody that's basically not stealing anything. And then the other person is basically just sort of like stealing everything and stabbing everybody as much as possible. See, okay. I'm, stealing I'm stealing and everything and I'm not, and I'm trying not to ever alert anyone. Cause like, so one thing I learned real quickly, if you leave a, if you leave anything open, it will alert someone. Yeah. Like if you rummage through a cabinet and you leave the drawers, or if you leave the um, the cabinet doors open, someone will walk by and go, the, "Someone's been rummaging through the cabinets," and then they're on high alert and looking for you. So you gotta every door you open, you gotta shut. You gotta remember to shut it. And that's it's man, that's fun. that's fun. Yeah, and it's real fun to do that. It's fun to learn that too. Like some of the AI, some of the AI's way, it's smarter than I remember a thief game. <laughs> the AI being, which is. Uh, it's been hanging me up a little bit. Cool. Um, my best decision lately was I'm feeling pretty good about my PlayStation 4 purchase. Finally, it, it took yeah. till March, but uh, Infamous Second Son. Hmm. It's a it's a it's a pretty good looking game, and uh, it's pretty fun too. I um, no, I I will say I think I have the advantage of skipping Infamous Two and really enjoying Infamous One. And just Infamous Two was a great game, by the way. Oh, I never I, played yeah. the first one. I did play the second one, though. It's and more it, of uh, that style of game. Just like you get, you get your fill of it. And um, I was ready for a refill. And Second Son is. Uh, it feels. It feels pretty good. It. Um, so. Good. So I jumped into the stream. What. What. What the hell's going on in this particular version of the game? Okay. Superpowers. So, so they. Um, this is a new. The end of the world. The end of the world is happening. And you it's were X-Men. the only one. It's X Men, yeah. basically. Um, there, 
so this is what this is a different hero um or or different villain depending on how you play it's not cole monroe not no, cole not, not cole, cole not cole monroe no it's cole go ahead i'm okay doing a <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um and essentially this is uh years years later there are essentially um uh, cole, 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 cole mcgrath that's his name mcgrath it's got a good good hero last name he's actually he sounds like a bmx biker but um yeah the uh so these conduits, which are essentially mutants, are just uh, people that can basically take energy sources and they get superpowers from them. And they've been trying to round up all of these people and put them into prisons and um, you know protect humanity from these people. And um, basically, you play as some twenty-something um, kid in Seattle and that um, he learns that he can leech powers from conduits and he becomes one himself. So, so he's like the main, the main guy from heroes from the TV it's, show. it's, it's like, I mean, honestly, when they started their own, like Cause that ended well, <laughs> I don't know. It's coming back. <laughs> I know why, why is that show coming back? Why did they keep making seasons of it? Like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> God, I hate that show. So when, I love that first season. When Infamous came out, like it felt kind of original in that they're creating their own kind of comic book uh, game, and it, it felt like a. I mean, it was like the first like superhero game I was excited to play. And there's been other games since then that have captured that feeling. But um, I really like I really like how the open world and how you're uh, how navigating that world and running around and it feels in Infamous, and um, that's. The the best thing I can say about the game is not not only does it look great, but it just it just plays really smoothly. Like this is it's just running at a great frame rate while looking looking beautiful. The game design itself really hasn't evolved too much from Infamous One. Like it is it is more of open here open world superhero ness, but um, with a pretty decent story. Um, and some people were kind of giving it faults for not like really changing the game, but I don't know. I kind of give it a pass because one. I wanted some more infamous and it's exactly what I expected and wanted out of it. And two with these kind of launch window games for uh, the new consoles, they aren't really going to take risks. So I guess I kind of like prepared myself that that wasn't going to be the case. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing that this isn't like the groundbreaking game or a must have title or necessarily a system seller, but I feel pretty good about it as is. I feel like everything I've, I feel like everything I've heard about it, it it is the system seller. Like Titanfall is the Xbox system seller. And this is the uh, PlayStation one. Or is that just because this is the only new gen? I, 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 I personally feel like from what I've read and what I've seen that this is like Justin said, it's the thing that's validating the purchase of the system. I don't think it's going to make anybody go out and buy, a PlayStation. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> makes you feel okay. Yeah. No, no. Like, so it. I'm equating yeah. it to like I don't think Titanfall was the system seller that um, they were propping it up to be. Like it's it, yeah. it seems like it's a pretty fun game, but I still have, like I said, I have some value proposition issues with that game being sixty bucks and um, also buying a console on top of it. But it has its audience. It'll it'll be fine. I actually equate this more to Dead Rising Three. Which yeah. was more of the the like I said at the time the closest thing they had to a system seller at launch on either console, but just like kind of an experience that you know exactly what you're gonna get out of it, but it's also gonna kind of push the tech and impress you yeah. with its graphics and and I I would I would venture to say having not played Dead Rising three but just off the reviews I think uh, Infamous Second Son is probably more technically impressive and probably runs smoother than uh, Dead Rising had some of its own tech issues and I think it's just more accessible more fun. Um, but it is kind of a known quantity. So if you go in knowing that, you know, I think it's the best thing to own on the PlayStation Four right now, and it's a hell of a lot of fun to play. And you know, if my streams have kind of shown everything, I just I, it's really fun to be a bad guy in that game. I've uh, yeah. I've put in um, probably what six hours into the being an evil character and about three hours into being a good character. I think they both now, have yeah. their merits. Uh, I've watched, I watched your stream a little bit the other day. You got to go all in yeah. like, on a game like that because they don't like, don't, don't do the little a, road. There's you a, won't even get the power slider, right? Yeah. There's a slider that's going on. And if you do good, doesn't it move that slider back Yes. towards the good? And yeah. Got, that's what it, I think that's what infamous <laughs> two did. And so you just have to commit mm-hmm. and it sucks because like I was watching you um, like just kill civilians because yeah. you can either heal him or kill him, and or it's just like kick him in the gut. <laughs> well, I'm not. 
I'm not that evil. Right. Like I'm gonna tear this city up, but I don't want to just kill people. But it's right. like no, no. If you want the super, if you want the awesome evil super dark superpowers, you kill everybody. Yeah, it works but in the same way. Like if there are anim- if there are animals in the game, you kill them animals. That the- <laughs> there are you, kill, uh, you you stomp on roses, you smash everything. There's either there's. All I can see right now is three levels, but I think there's four or five levels to being good or bad. Like, actually, I, I think there's five because I think the fifth one is you become infamous. But um, so each level of that requires more evil deeds to power it up. But as you, you know, as you get to the third or fourth level of either being good or evil, you unlock like stronger powers for that side. Like the the biggest difference I noticed was I basically had the choice of. I could use vents. If I was good, I could use the vents to get the top of the roof. They would heal me whenever I'd use them if I was good. But if I'm evil, it launches me higher into the air. So you like... Yeah. Um, Infamous Infamous 2 had a weird thing. Like, you get halfway point and you have to choose between two other conduits that you, you've you been fighting with, who you're going to, like, merge with. Mm-hmm. And then you, so then you decide, okay, do I want the ice powers or do I want the demonic powers? Mm-hmm. I, I think I went demonic first, and you get this, um, like, you get this side ability that kind of lets you, like, turn into a bird, like a f- phoenix, and fly forward. Well, when you get the ice power, you can launch yourself into the air, like a, like a, you know, like just you're on the ground, launch yourself into the air, and now you're on top of a building. God, that pissed me off so much. <laughs> like, because that, that power is awesome. And then I played that I I feel like a sucker the first time because I didn't have I didn't have a power like that. So uh, y- you might have trouble on your second playthrough because they uh, yeah. I, yeah, I mean I never you might, you might get a you might get a power like that that makes you move super fast and you fly all over the you know all over the world and then you'll play it again and then they'll give you some crappy other power. I think power. if I take a if I take a break I think I'll like it, but uh the 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 conundrum I hit was um I think for live streaming purposes, it's more fun to kind of be carefree and play as the evil guy because you just don't have to worry about anything. But I was actually having fun with my my good playthrough too, which was basically involved, you know, trying to like you know wreck the enemies, but being aware of when civilians were around and not trying to hurt them. And uh, um, th- that little touch of strategy, or just like being a little bit more tactical in my approach was uh, was also fun. So, anyway, I that game is what I wanted it to be, and that's why I bought my PlayStation 4, so there's that. Um, you bought your PlayStation 4 for this game? That was the that was the game that... That trailer tri- like, triggered my purchase of the game, yeah. So, I just wanted to say so, four twice in a row. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> you did it, and you said, this is why I bought my PlayStation 4. <laughs> ah, I see what you did. Yeah, I see, see what, what I did there? Did. Yeah. Kind of. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's, we're kind of running along here. So let's run through the, uh, the new releases here. Um, I'm going to read through this list. You guys shout out any games that get your attention. First of all, the, uh, the big release of the week, Diablo three Reaper of souls. I say it's the big release because, Hey, we're doing a, a marathon and giveaway on Friday. So I think snooze fest. <laughs> Shut up. It's not, <laughs> you're off the show. You're supposed to bring ratings. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Friday, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Ethan, Aaron, and myself, and whoever else shows up, uh, we're going to be streaming Diablo 3 all day, probably in the evening, and uh, we'll be giving away three copies of Reaper's, Reaper of Souls, one of which will be a combo pack with Diablo 3. So uh, swing by our Twitch channel and uh, be on the lookout for opportunities to win win the game there. Um, beyond that, um, Bioshock Infinite, uh, their Burial at Sea Episode 2 DLC is out. So I'm curious to see how that that concludes and if that ends up being uh, worth the wait because uh, the the Part 1 did not really get received all that well. Um, then we've got Mercenary Kings. We've got Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Mirror of Fate is coming to PC this week. Um, Jordan's excited about Cabela's Big Game Hunter Pro Hunts. So, man... Yeah. yeah, killing killing animals. Love Let's it. see. Next couple, I don't even know what they are. Realms of Arcania, Ether One, Escape Goat Two. Warned it a sequel? Huh? It warned it a sequel? I, I liked Escape Goat a lot. Hey, be careful. He's a friend of the show. Yeah, that's. I just, I mean, I I've never heard of it, so it's a, shut your mouth, Well, sell me on it. What is it? It's a puzzle platformer. 
It's uh, okay. it's um, you play as a goat that is a victim of witchcraft, or a person that is a victim of witchcraft that becomes a goat, and uh, you have a little mouse buddy, and you have to like navigate all these box puzzles, and um, it's uh, it's actually it's actually really fun. And then um, the first one, Ian Stalker, he did he did on his own, and this this time he's got some help with the art, and it looks it looks fantastic, and. Um, actually, I'll come. I'll art, come back to that in a little bit. So the art looked good first time around. Yeah, right. well, I mean, it looked cool. It was like had that retro style, and the, yeah, the, this one. There's a little I'll look into it. Betrayer, which looks kind of interesting, first person well, action that's adventure. The, that's the black and white game, right? And red. There's some red in it. Why is it? Why is it know. black and white and red? Because it got because your attention. Yeah. Gameplay reason? Because now I remember it. I guess the as the black and white game. Because <laughs> dogs need to play it. We'll buy. Is the color DLC? Is that coming later? Yeah, yeah. You have to buy color. Yeah. Um, no, I, seriously, seriously. Do you know why it's no, black and white? I don't know anything about it. Because it's, than... it's a horror game too, isn't it? I, I think it's. I keep seeing that that word pop up. I know it's I know from the guys it. that did um, No One Lives Forever and Fear. Like some of those devs split off to make this game. So hmm. okay. Hey, uh, Jason. Black and white is scary. I know you've been waiting on all of your PlayStation platforms to get Fez, but now you can finally get Fez on all your PlayStation Ooh. platforms. I will not buy it on my not Vita. Okay. Uh, there's it's a new... A, it, it, is a, it is a fantastic game. There's a new Blaze Blue and awesome. also Dino... Dino... Dino. This would be... Dino. Dynasty <laughs> Warriors 8 I would play. Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends um, I yeah. might not play. So... um. Let's see. Jordan, what were you going to give a shout-out to? I don't even see that game. I don't have anything on my shout-out. Yeah, I have a call-out. I mean, for, for the new releases. For the new releases. Oh, it's... Uh, it's you just have to... You, it's one of those um, indie games that you buy from the developer. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, no, it's, not, on a li- it's not on a list anywhere. Yeah, I just... Uh, who had it? Uh, Kill Screen uh, Daily, I saw it on there. It was... Um, it had, uh, Echoes of the Wild, um, the pixel art look real cool, and they uh, on there they have a video of it on the I'm website. Always, that, I'm it, it's got that um, swords and sorcery kind of okay, kind of look to it, and it it kind of play, I think it it probably plays about the same, but it's only five bucks, and I'm actually when I get home today, I'm probably gonna go ahead and buy it because because cool. it looks real cool and it sounds it sounds real interesting too. Um, but yeah, it's on it's on Steam Greenlight. Yeah, it looks really colorful for what it's worth. Well, you've, yeah. I mean, you got written down for the pixel art. You got written down. It's a survival horror game. Yeah, so I think it's, I I think they're doing like the don't starve thing, where like there's an end game, like there's a goal that you're trying to get towards, but you can't just race towards it. First, you gotta you gotta get food, mm. and then but it's all side scrolly, um, pixel art looking like that. Gotcha. All right. It sounds hard. Like I was reading some of the comments, and uh, it sounds like it, it's a real tough game. Like you, it, it, like the permadeath kind of like you do something. You, oh, I've never seen that guy before. Oh, he one shotted me, and I got to you know now I got to start all over again. So I think that's where the survival part. I'm of always it. curious. It's, it's horror because like there's all this weird. Um, there's like, like a demon and stuff in it, isn't there? Yeah, like you'll um, you can um, you, it's just like you out in the woods by yourself, but you're not. Mm-hmm. Because you'll have flashbacks of your apartment, and so you might be in this weird, like, days or something like that. And then you like you can offer food up to deem to uh, to the gods or something like that. And then whenever you die, you get chased. You get just chased around by a demon. And if you can if you can outrun the demon, then you return. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> like just reading the description of it, it sounded like it. It sounded like um, Don't Starve, where anytime you just. Like read something new about Don't Star. If you're like, man, that's like <laughs> that thing's that thing's in the game. Like yeah. where? I played the game for 15 hours and never saw that. That's it. It sounded like that, and I, I enjoyed that about Don't Star. So that's why. That's why. The, and then the pixel art. Now um, I'm always curious kind of, of um, if pixel art. Echoes of the Wild. If, yeah. Everyone should check that video out. I was curious to see pixel pixel art games pull off horror. Like uh, after playing. Oh, home and um, lone Endless survivor. Like, it's it's always interesting to see them and or year walk. Like, uh, seeing those uh, more pixels. Well, as long as the 
as long as the music's really yeah i mean it's all about atmosphere but it's it's, right it's no small accomplishment to pull that off so (laughs) yeah all right uh we've got time for one of your shout outs or your call out so jason pick one i'm gonna just quickly call out disney buying maker studios what is maker Uh, basically maker studios is a group of uh youtube channels they've got about fifty five thousand channels um, basically, 55,000? Yeah. So, Jeez. you know, bigger channels, you know, including like the Yogscast. I mean, that's the, that's a, that's I like, one I of like their, the Yogscast. I didn't realize uh, they were, I didn't realize they were part of that. Yeah. That's one of their bigger ones, but basically Disney plopped down $500 million to buy them. And I'm just a little bit concerned on what that might what do. What does in that terms. mean? Well, I don't think they know what it they means. Buy, like, who did they buy it from? The, the Maker Studios. So this yeah. is, they acquired Maker. They actually bought Maker Studios. Yeah, well, which is a, which is a YouTube I guess I don't video know. Yeah, I guess I don't. I guess I don't know how that works. I know. Well, like, basically, okay. So basically, what you do is, you know, you have these these studios that acquire these these channels, and they provide them with uh, financial backing. So essentially, they say, okay, you made you you got this many people to come to your channel. We'll provide you with you know advertising. We'll pay for you know your rights to certain. Um, to certain music to put in your your, your oh, videos, okay. your because um, I knew I knew there was we'll hook you up with games. We'll hook you, you know, they're basically hooking up people with basically the means to do video gaming. They're actually paying them salaries to to do what oh, they do. Oh, okay. Because I knew some of those people they get protection from the um, like all the copyright bans. Right. Like if you're part of a group like that, then well, and that's what I'm well, that's what I'm you. kind of worried about is that Disney's going to get their hands involved in what YouTube basically says what's right yeah. and wrong, and it's just going to kind of mess things up for us smaller guys. Uh, you Disney will copyright the Yogg's Cast Minecraft stuff, and then nobody will be able to <laughs> to to have any. Other, it'll just be that. Well, it's just do Minecraft. That's just what I'm worried about. It's just <laughs> that, that would sh- that would shut YouTube down. Well, that, that, nobody else could stream Minecraft. You know, it's things that it's things like that that I'm worried about. Is that they're just going to base? You know, a lot of the gaming stuff is already oversaturated, and by drastically potentially controlling the means of people getting their content. By having such a big name behind it, it just it just has me worried. I'm going to be really keeping my my ear to the ground to see I was, what they do. But are, are was, you talking like attention, like advertising or attention being drawn by Disney within YouTube or outside YouTube? I'm just you know Disney's been buying a lot of really big properties lately, and I'm just I, I don't know. I guess I saw it more as I'm I'm less worried about it on that aspect, but I thought I saw it more of like a purchase out of ignorance of like. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you, you start to see just like the amount of old, views and subscribers that. that no, no, not 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 necessarily that, but just like that. You know, the the most subscribed channel on YouTube is 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 a gamer. You know that yeah. the that these larger companies are going to they're going to try to figure out how to get a foothold, um, in in this growing market, and you know this was. This is a pretty smart buy if you're going to get into it. Like I don't know, I don't necessarily see it as a, um, a threat or necessarily a, a a focus on a lot of the copyright issues. But it's just like Disney trying to figure out how we can produce content in this realm, and we're going to need these personalities. And obviously, the Yogg's Cast guys have have definitely made. Yeah, I mean, they're going. So. They're certainly going the easy way around it, and I'm not blaming them for for making the move. It's a very smart financial move on their part. But yeah, part. it's going to gonna get shape their foot in the door. It's but it, I'm just as a YouTube video content creator. Yeah, I'm just you know I'm already I've already have enough challenges ahead of me just trying to get people to pay attention to me. I'm just worried. Just get that, Disney to pay attention to you, and they'll buy you. It's well, fine. that is my goal. I've, <laughs> I've written them letters. I sent them naked photos. Um, <laughs> That's been Justin's know, uh, goal all get, along. That's I'm, also his strategy too. The naked. I, I've been trying thing. to figure out where they. Keep Walt Disney's frozen head. Get Pixar to make a 3D version of your body, your naked body, and then give them that too. And then they can put it in their movies. You got yeah. So you got a couple every, routes you can go with. So th- every day's a challenge now. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Good luck, Jason. They'll sneak it into. They'll sneak the, your naked body into the cover art. Um, the uh, Little Mermaid <laughs> reference. No, okay. You're working with Alyssa Milano now. Um, I wanted to like real quick. Uh, call out Volition and whoever the fuck canceled their yeah, right. next gen Western game. So the Saints Row guys were working on a Western. 
video game and somebody had the balls to cancel it and that's bullshit yeah. i don't know anything else about it but you don't need to know anything else about it either my shout out actually goes to uh, double fine and uh they they actually made a pretty funny video this week that confused me because uh we've been following escape goat 2 uh for quite a while um after kind of getting to know ian around the, the launch of the first one and um talking about goats and mice with him the uh so Double Fine posted this video that Double Fine presents Escape Goat 2, which is actually one of just one of their silly videos of basically Tim Schafer trying to claim Escape Goat 2 as his own by taking, <laughs> by, by taking out Ian, Ian Stalker, the developer of the game. And uh, basically it became a promotion for the fact that Double Fine um, kind of handpicked um, some indie developers out there and is helping publish their games and just giving them basically space to work with and advice and business advice to help um, get their games out there, and Escape Coat Two ended up being the first one that they're helping publish. So uh, they were getting the word out of that game by making a silly video where Tim Schafer killed the creator of Escape Coat Two. It was pretty uh, had it came completely out of left field, but um, it's just another just cool double fine story. Just how they're trying to, you know, help other developers um, along the. Uh, you know, the path that they, they've kind of carved out for themselves. They're just one of the most interesting, large indie development uh, studios out there. So it's cool to see them reach out to the little guys. Yeah, Double just Fine call. is a indie. Yeah, they are. Indie they're studio. In, they are. Yeah, yeah, I get that. They're an independent studio. So yeah. I just don't know how I haven't seen this game. It, it looks really interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, you'll have to go back and listen to Ethan's interview. It's pretty entertaining. So okay. Especially if you like witchcraft. So, um, who doesn't? Jordan, take us home with the what the fuck story of the day. Facebook bought or is in the process of buying the Oculus Rift. Can be yours for two billion dollars. <laughs> so, as uh, as Jonathan Blow pointed out on Twitter, um, that means that John Carmack now works for Facebook. So, <laughs> that is, yeah, I was thinking about that. That is that is so awesome. He left it no, to I, go I, work for Facebook. I think. I think I've pieced it all together here. Okay. So step one, Facebook buys Oculus Rift VR technology. Nope. Step two, they're going to buy Second Life. All right. Combine the two things together, and you will be in face. You will be in. You will live inside Facebook with all your friends no. and poking and no. liking no. each other. You're kind of so, right, for but all, Facebook's going to buy eternity. Minecraft. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so weird. John Carmack's working working for Zuckerberg. Yeah, no, it's weird because when we think of the Oculus Rift, we think of video games. But it's the second you attach it's a platform. So Facebook to it, and exactly now you think of it as oh shoot, that means yeah, like I keep like some of the articles is like oh like what video conferencing? Yeah, (laughs) I can talk to my mom in a three like thing. What? That's the like I can like. And watch ads in 3D. Like the minute you do that, you realize, oh yeah, someone is going to ruin VR technology. <laughs> no, and that's um, I don't know if you saw me post. Are, that's that's the game face. That's what's going to ruin virtual reality. Because the last, game face. I've, last I've not we- heard of it. So l- last week, um, Sony finally revealed their VR stuff, their Project Morpheus, which got decent reviews. Um, and then at the same time, there's rumors that Microsoft is working on their own v- virtual reality stuff. And, and then I Nintendo, saw Nintendo Nintendo's working on their their <laughs> own as no, well. No, the other one uh, but it'll be it'll be really weird and it'll have like a this weird peripheral. No, there's actually you know, a really a funny boy, right? They'll just re, they'll just revise the virtual boy. No, there's a there's a funny video <laughs> of uh of a they, are, they already created VR. Yeah. <laughs> this funny image of a dude that strapped a Wii U gamepad to his face and called it the <laughs> the VR Wii U. Um but no, there's an Android device called the uh, the Game Face that is virtual the reality. Game Face. Yeah, it's the, it's the worst name for a VR thing. Anyway, is that your problem with it? No, yeah, it's just yeah, that's, it's it's just that's yeah. that's that's okay. I didn't know we all that's, needed to make virtual reality. I thought maybe we'd learn from either. all of us wanting to make 3D. Um, well, maybe so- I kind of always just assumed everyone would yeah pull into the Oculus Rift. They would just yeah. I, you know, like throw money at it or that's what I was games. saying. Is like, why wouldn't Microsoft Damn. or Sony just work with them? They've already made some. Yeah. So, so well, it's really surprising to see the the backer that they got was Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, Jason, so I mean, and let, let me just play devil's advocate. I mean, is this is putting putting two billion dollars into VR no, technology necessarily a bad, a bad thing? thing? No. Okay. The funny thing is, I look over at Twitter right now, so I see there, there's these uh, you know all my stuff coming in. Right. They're so, called so tweets. They're called tweets. They're called tweets. Retweets. <laughs> So it's uh, so it says Oculus Rift bought by Facebook by two billion for two billion dollars. The next tweet says Notch pulls the plug on Oculus Rift version of Minecraft. Was that for real? <laughs> that was for real. Wow. And that that makes a lot of sense if you know who Notch is. Yeah. That, that that I love that that that's brilliant. So he he tweeted it out basically. Wow. Although in on the opposite side, you know, <laughs> you could say we've got we've got you know Facebook messing up our. Our Oculus Rift. What if John Carmack? What if we get a little bit more Doom into our mm. Facebook than we have? That's before? what I'm hoping. Like, as long as I they don't that. affect. So, as look long as at it that way. As long as they don't affect the the game side of things, I'll I'll be okay. And then uh, we all. I mean, if virtual reality was actually going to hit mainstream, it was going to go do other things. So um, that side of it's okay. But it was it, you know it's kind of an an icky first reaction to see that. Um, icky. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the Facebook yeah, jumped they, in here. But. Yeah, I'm sure Twitter is in a rage right I now. Know, all, the, you know, like, all the car- comments were on all the articles I read. I don't know. O- Oculus was kind of like this just popular... <laughs> oh, Josh yeah, Lee were... literally just te- texted me, Facebook buys Oculus, what? <laughs> so um, apparently he's not watching the show live. Um, or he would have found that out about three minutes ago. Um, would, you, would you like for me to read the Notch tweet? Yeah. It's very entertaining. It says, we were in talks about maybe bringing a version of Minecraft to Oculus. I just canceled that deal. Facebook <laughs> Wow, that is a neat knee-jerk reaction. So, And apparently he uh, wrote a blog about it, so you can check that out too. Well, now I'll be curious. We'll probably I'm going to revisit this story next week on um, our top video game podcast with Gifford, but we'll... Uh, because I'll be curious to see where we're at after this. Because this literally hit right before we went live. So, so. S- stay tuned as the as the events unfold. We'll give you more. Uh, Here are the horrible, horrible more gut reactions without <laughs> with very little facts. Very soon. I love every article I saw today. Every the first thing everyone said was April first is close. <laughs> like a <laughs> little skeptical. Zuckerberg. This seems so ridiculous, but it's not April first, so probably Zuckerberg true. Eat Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> that reminded me. Oh, that was he turned in Job of the Hut. Was that what that was? Uh, you could be Pizza whatever Hut. you wanted to be. All right, cool. That works. That's going to do it for The Horrible Show tonight. Uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. We'll be back again with another podcast next Tuesday. And, Unless uh, we get bought by Disney or Facebook. Go, good either luck, could, Jason. Go make it happen. Either send could them, happen. Send them more I will have photos. Walt Disney's head by next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.